going on on my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys and welcome back to another installment of my Steven Spielberg Directors Marathon. And in today's review I am taking a look at his 1989 romantic drama Always. So Always was released in 1989, the same year as Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. This movie is actually a remake of a 1943 movie called A Guy Named Joe. Never heard of that movie. I don't know if that movie's any good, but apparently it was good enough for Spielberg to remake it, apparently. Is this movie any good? Well. This isn't really considered one of his best films, and it's one of Spielberg's biggest bombs. Find out together what I think of this bizarre movie. So in all ways, Pete Sandich is a reckless firefighting pilot who is killed in what was to have been his final mission. Ascending to heaven, Pete is introduced to a business-like angel who instructs the spectral Pete to pass on his aviation knowledge to his young successor. While doing so, Pete also smooths the course of romance for his earthly girlfriend, who after several months of grieving, finally falls in love with another man. And this movie stars Richard Dreyfuss, Holly Hunter, John Goodman, Audrey Hepburn, and Brad Johnson. This movie is beyond weird. Like, this movie is one of the most bizarre experiences I have ever seen in my life and after watching Always, this is the first time I've seen this film. I had no idea what to rate this film. This movie is just... I don't know! I don't know! I knew this movie would be weird from the beginning of the movie. Like, I just couldn't really buy into the romance between Richard Dreyfuss and Holly Hunter. For one... Richard Dreyfuss looks too old to come with Holly Hunter because of how he looks in this movie. I don't, can't really say the age difference between the two actors, but the way it looks in the movie, I felt very uncomfortable during their relationship. So that's a sign that this movie did something wrong. And then the story, it was just all over the place. The script was way too saccharine for my liking. This is like the cheesiest script that's ever been in a Steven Spielberg film. And I should be falling in love with this movie because Spielberg's great at his sentimentality with movies like E.T. and Close Encounters. But this movie, it misses the mark because of how painfully on the nose this movie is. Like, when they're falling in love, she actually has a bad dream that he is going to die. And she's like, no, don't go on this plane, you're going to die. And he's like, no, I love flying these planes. I love fighting out fires and stuff. And just the, the foreshadowing is bad. Uh, just the script is just crazy. <laughs> and parts of this movie that are supposed to be so dramatic came off as unintentionally hilarious to me. Especially when we get to when Dreyfus's character Pete comes back as a spirit. This movie gets unintentionally creepy throughout. Especially when he's just hanging out trying to help his successor be as good as him. It gets weirdly uncomfortable like there's some parts where I don't know if he's trying to help the guy or hurt the guy because of how messed up this movie is and then when he hangs around his old girlfriend played by Holly Hunter this was made by a different director and feel like a horror movie almost because it's just so creepy she can talk to him in his sleep and he's whispering to her and she's communicating to him in his sleep. <laughs> this movie is weird. All jokes aside, uh, there are things I do like about Always. It's beautifully shot. That's something you tend to expect in a Steven Spielberg movie. Uh, the John Williams score is okay. Not his best score, but you know, it's serviceable enough. It definitely fits with the tone of the movie. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it does fit the tone of this movie. 
And everybody tries their best in this movie. Like, everybody does give good performances. Like, Richard Dreyfuss is good in this movie. I think it's his weakest performance in a Spielberg movie because he's so much better in Jaws and Close Encounters, but he still gives a good performance in this movie. Same with Holly Hunter. John Goodman, I, I am a big fan of John Goodman, and he is pretty entertaining to watch in this film. And also worth noting is the fact that Audrey Hepburn ended her career on this movie. She plays the guardian angel who helps Richard Dreyfuss out. She only has two scenes and her stuff is more of a cameo than a real role, but I've always enjoyed Audrey Hepburn and she is really excellent in this film. I'm gonna say that. Like, I kinda wish she was in the movie more because she was so good and even though this isn't a great movie, at least she still gave a good performance in the last movie she starred in. But yeah, this movie is quite bonkers and off the rails. What should be a melodrama is unintentionally hilarious at times. The ending. I don't know what to say about the ending. The ending was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, the ending. <laughs> okay, I think this might be a spoiler video because I don't care. So Holly Hunter decides she's actually going to fly a plane because she's tired of being sidelined because she can't actually fly because there's this bad fire and some firefighters are trapped in the woods. And so she flies the plane, doesn't have the best experience. And of course, drives his character. Part of his movie, he can share his thoughts into the heads of other people so they can succeed. And so he does that. And it is a pretty good little climax for the most part. It's well shot, it is very intense. And then they crash into a pond. <laughs> and for a moment, I thought if Holly Hunter's character dies, and it's this overly sappy, happy ending where. They reunite in heaven and they're like dancing or something. That would be the stupidest thing. Cause the whole build up of this movie was Holly Hunter and Richard Dreyfus. They had this dance together, and she had she put on this fancy dress and they had this little party and they danced to the song "Smoke Is in Your Eyes." That that was the whole build up, and I thought that was gonna be the end of the movie. And if it was, I think if that was the end, it. If that was how it ended, where they both died, I think it would have been so stupid and I would have loved it even more. No, that wasn't the case and it was still a pretty dumb ending. So it looks like she's drowning in the lake or pond or whatever and so Richard Dreyfus he comes and says, take my hand and she grabs his hand and he gets, gets her out of the water and he has the creepiest look on his face like this movie is unintentionally creepy but i guess it does have a good message i will say where he does let go of her even though that was the girl that he loved and she ends up falling in love with uh, the younger guy that he was training as a successor. Uh, which, speaking of, that guy was so goofy. I don't know what she saw in that guy. His John Wayne impression and him laughing like a donkey was just... What? I don't know what to make of this movie. This movie... I should technically hate this movie because it does so many things wrong in its screenplay and how overly smaltzy it is. It, I think it's an indicator of Spielberg. When he gets too smaltzy, it fails. But when, when it's balanced with other things, it works. And that's why E.T. was so successful, but always was quite a mess. But I still kind of enjoyed how weird it was. Like, it's still well acted. It's well shot. I mean, I cared enough about what was going on because I was kind of enjoying it even though it's very cringy throughout. It's just so weird. I will say it's better than 1941. 1941 is hot garbage and that movie just annoyed me. And while always is annoying, it's entertainingly annoying and I was kind of digging it. I think objectively this movie would get a one and a half stars 
which is what I gave 1941, but I'm not comparing this to 1941. I think this movie is so entertaining to watch for all the wrong reasons. I kind of had a ball watching this movie, I'm not going to lie, but this movie is all over the place, and the highest rating I'm going to give always is three out of five stars. And on the 100 point scale, I'm going to give it a 53 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Always as part of my Steven Spielberg Director's Marathon, where I review his complete filmography from his directing debut to his most recent film. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're a fan of Steven Spielberg, I'll leave a link in the description below for a playlist of all the Steven Spielberg reviews I've done in the marathon so far. At the time of this video, I've reviewed movies such as the original three Indiana Jones movies, Raiders, Temple of Doom, and Last Crusade. I've also reviewed Jaws, Close Encounters, E.T., The Color Purple, Empire of the Sun, to some of his more obscure films such as 1941, The Sugarland Express, and Duel. I have more Spielberg reviews to come on this marathon, so if you're a fan of Spielberg and you need to catch up on my past reviews, click the link in the description below to see more. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified of future Steven Spielberg reviews. Join me next time in the Steven Spielberg Marathon where I'll be taking a look at one of Steven Spielberg's hidden gems for some people. And I, this is a movie that a lot of people hated when it first came out, but the kids who grew up with it loved it and it's become a cult classic now. What movie am I talking about? I am talking about the 1991 film Hook. Definitely look forward to that video coming very, very soon. But if you've seen Always, let me know down in the comments below. Would you follow the film? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. This is your first video. Besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, music reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!